why there are multiple organic stands yes many time organic operators organic stakeholder students organic revolution people organic movement people ask me this query why there are multiple organic standards means why world don't have a single organic standards and every country every region will follow it means we have indian organic standards which is called npop we have american organic standards that is called enop and again we have the european organic standards again there are different country has the different organic standards and why we have all these organic standards so uh, this question is obvious and uh, this multiple standards also create some complications in the international organic trade but still there is a need to have the different organic standards even including private standards so there are internationally more than 100 organic standards including the private standards so what is the reason behind this having the multiple organic standards means uh, we are seeing the different standard logo on particular product or even one product is certified as per the indian organic standard that same product is also certified as per the american organic standard same product is also certified by the gas that is the japanese organic standards because this particular product producer or product organic produce farmer want to export that particular product in that market so as per the demand he is following that particular standard so that his product will get accepted in uh, that particular market this is well understood and accepted our question is not having the different logo on one particular product our question is why we don't have single organic standards across the world and the reason behind is that there are different climate different different culture different nature different diseases in the different countries and according to that this means there are maybe 10 reasons different reason but this is one of the reason means suppose in india we are farmers having the cow not only for the milk but it for the compost that cow dung is used as the best compost that is our culture that is our practice same way different country has the different culture we are collecting that cow dung and we are composting and some other country may have they are not collecting that cow dung but they are allowing those cow in the open farm so that that cow dung will be get drop on the grass or in the your field and that field become the fertile but this is not possible in india because we are the small land holder people means we don't have that much land that we can have the cows in our open farm open field and this way this this way the affect the culture or particular tradition which define the organic standards of that particular locality and again next point which uh, forced to have the different organic standards is the cropping pattern cropping pattern means what exactly suppose in india some south part or you can say the northeast part they are cultivating rice three times a year suppose you consider the middle of india they are cultivating two times per year again their plantation method is different means some people are doing the seeding some people are doing the transplantation but if you uh, see the vietnam especially that cantho area and um, lower part of the vietnam they are cultivating rice in some area four times per year I mean just in the three months they are getting the crop and they have their that type of variety they have their the, those traditional methods and again they are not doing the any transplantation they are just doing the seeding of the particular rice crop this is just a, i have given the example of the rice this is the type of cultivation or cropping pattern of the every country suppose in ethiopia they grow the coffee organic coffee in the hilly area without having some other trees 
but in india also in uh, colombia we are having the coffee plantation just like plantation in existing forest means there are other trees they are growing they are uh, making some shadow so that dehydration of the soil or evaporation of moisture will be the less and there are different purposes of those trees also to hold the soil structure so that soil will not get washed out from that particular heat so these are the different cropping patterns which force to have the different organic standards organic practices in different countries so we are having the different organic standards and third one important point is the conventional agriculture age means from how long you are doing the conventional farming in that particular area for example suppose in europe they are using the chemical since 1920 or 1930 and uh, there are some part of the myanmar or even the some part of the northeast of the india their particular truck or particular vehicle cannot go in that area because there are no roads so that vehicle has not gone so urea or other chemical fertilizer also not gone there means the people who are doing the farming traditionally there they are already doing the organic farming by default because they have not started even the conventional agriculture they have not started even the using chemical so there is no need to stop the use of the chemical because they are not already not using the chemicals and this is the beauty of that particular area in that area there is no need to have the conversion period or something like that strengthen rules or some hard rules because they are by default organic so in such area such a, like country bhutan their organic standards are the flex- very you can say i will not say the flexible but those standards are very those rules are very simple to follow because that farm is already organic by default they just do the documentation get it certified and follow the same process because their conventional age of that farm is zero means till today they have not added any a particular chemical in that farm but at the same time if you consider the farm of the usa or where uh, industrial farming is done they are doing the particular crop on the 500 hectares and they are using the extensive chemicals and then that particular soil has lost its organic nature so in that case you should have the strong organic standards so that that particular soil get will get converted into organic soil and there the conversion period and all those comes in the picture so this way your conventional agriculture age also affect to have the different organic standards in different area now again most important factor which affect on the organic standard of that particular country is the country development stage means suppose in the developed country they are getting the good price for their produce so they can spend more on the organic standard following organic documentation organic storage and all those things but the countries which are not yet that developed in the development stage or under development countries where price of the organic food is very less or people are not able to afford the organic food uh, then farmer is also getting the less price then he cannot spend more on the following or on, on the sticking on the organic standards in that case you should reduce the certification cost you should allow some flexibility in the packing and storage and all those things so we have to modify the organic standards for that particular underdeveloped country means you cannot have the same organic standard in europe and america and that underdeveloped country in the underdeveloped country they are cost of the production is less they are getting the very less uh, sale price so they have to follow the local standards which are which will not affect more on the their production cost but if they want to manu- uh, produce the organic food there and they want to export to the usa then europe then they have to follow the american and european organic standards then cost of living yes this also affect that equivalent to the your country development stage because you cannot spend more on the production organic production cost because 
you should get the proper price for the, your organic produce that should be affordable and acceptable to the consumer if particularly uh, cost of living is very low then if you spend more on the organic standards and organic uh, regulations then cost of uh, price of the organic food will be high in that case people will uh, that will not be affordable to the people so cost of living should be considered and that also affect on having the multiple organic standards again the population density yes this definitely affect and forced to have the multiple organic standards suppose in the sweden or in new zealand or netherlands they might have the regulation that in one Of thousand square meter, or in one acre, or in one hectare, they can have the maximum ten cows or two cows in one uh, thousand square meter, or there may be some limit for one hectare that you cannot have the more than cows in one hectare area. They, that may be the rule of that particular organic standards. But countries like Bangladesh or countries like india where small landholder farmers having the total land like 2 acre 3 acre or 5 acres in that particular 2 acre they are surviving themselves their family and also their cattles in that case we cannot apply that limitation uh, number of cow limitation in india or uh, bangladesh or sri lanka due to population density so this population density force you to modify the indian organic standards as per the indian population density and that has to be uh, done and implemented in the europe as per the local population density and this way each country has to have the different organic standards due to population density again we have the different organic standards due to the private organic standard requirement yes before how private standard affect on the different organic standards we need to add the what is meant by private organic standards see nop or usda or european union or npop all these organic standards are governed by the particular government of that particular country or region but suppose one small corporate company organic farming company or one particular group of the people want to have their own organic standards in that case they can form their own organic standards they can take the guideline from the ifom family of standards they can have the own organic standards it's a completely commercialization of their product in that case they can have the own organic standards they can publish their standards to the consumer and if their product is acceptable as per this particular organic standards then consumer will buy it and that particular standards is the choice of consumer that is not governed by any government or authority so important of private standard is increasing day by day because people producer want to have their own standard production process and they want to give the more guarantee to the consumer that our product is something as per our organic standards and we we are more than some established organic standards so best example of this private organic standard is crop in uh, sweden and there are eco in netherland and there are some other bio burgers and all those things are the example of private organic standards in that case in the private organic standards you as a producer owner of the standard has to stick to the standards and give guarantee your own guarantee to the consumer that this product is followed by this and if consumer is satisfied to those standards they will buy your produce as per your private organic standard so due to having the private organic standards in different country there are multiple organic standards and again stage of the organic movement in that particular country yes suppose organic is new in that particular country they at the start of the organic then you cannot have the more strict organic standards in that case again the role of the government comes suppose any particular country has the low develop agriculture develop and their produce has the low price and government has their own thinking that they should follow the natural farming and their organic should be more natural than the combination of some 
technological processes and they are not accepting technology they are just go, want to go by the environmental rules and all those things in that case that country government may influence the organic standard of that particular country and again development stage of the organic movement means what exactly means how organic revolution is going in that particular country how people are demanding the organic standards how people are influencing the organic standards how they are demanding the modification of the organic standard how much organic they, they have understood by themselves at the political level at the economical level at the farmer level at the trader level so all these people will influence the local organic standards this way development stage of the organic also affect on the what organic standards should they have this way the all these factors eight nine factors affect on the organic standards and forced to have the multiple organic standards in the country now the most important point you should understand in the organic sector there is a harmonization between the organic standards what is exactly mean by the harmonization of the organic standards means what exactly that one one farmer is producing organic fruits in india as per the indian organic standards but he want to export uh, that particular fruits to the europe then european union should accept that fruit on the basis of the indian organic standards so indian organic standard people and european organic standards people meet mutually and they give the terms and condition to each other that european people give the condition to the indian organic standard people that we will accept your produce in europe if you do the some modification or these are the few conditions which has to be followed by npop producer then we can accept your product npop organic certified product as a equivalent to the european organic products means that product will be remain uh, certified as per the indian organic standards but european market will accept it as a organic and that is called the equivalence and this equivalence is the continuous process happens between the two countries and regions and different organic standard people and ifom international federation of organic agriculture movement and the organic leaders like me support this equivalence so that the organic market will get open to each other from one country to another country and international trade can happen so this process of understanding and accepting and request the modification adding the conditions to each other and come to the some conclu- conclusion this is called the harmonization of the organic standards and acceptance of the each other's organic standards in each other's market similarly suppose one particular fertilizer which is approved in the organic farming as per the european organic standards npop that indian organic standards can decide whether that uh, product is uh, should be term as organic in india or not as per the harmonization process this way there is a need of multiple organic standards in the country we cannot avoid that we can't have the one organic standards because that will be the very tough to follow for the some regions and that may disturb the organic movement and may affect the organic market and um, there will be the less availability of the organic food so we don't have the choice other than having the multiple organic standards and solution of on the multiple organic standards is the harmonization of the organic standards or harmonization of the each other's market and accepting each other's standards on the basis of particular condition or particular understanding and this is the beauty of having the multiple organic standards and this is a very interesting topic we, today we have covered and wish you all the best for your organic activity and the most important you should i will request you to share this knowledge with the maximum students maximum organic stakeholders and the people who want to come in the organic sector and this knowledge will help to move our organic movement and this will guide new startup people on the various aspect of the organic thank you and all the best